My child was hit at a bus stop. Do I have a case? So welcome back to the Williams LLB YouTube channel, everybody. I'm Joel and this is Chase. And today we want to cover that topic with you dealing with what happens when your child is hit by a car at a school bus stop when they're either waiting on the bus or trying to get on the bus. And if you have any other ideas of situations where you're wondering if you have a case, just go ahead and insert that in the comment section below and we'll try to address it as soon as we can. So Chase, you want to get us started? Sure. So typically speaking, the general answer is always going to be yes. You more than likely have a case if your child is hit, um, either getting on the bus, waiting at the bus stop, things like that. Now, of course, with every legal question and every legal answer, the real, real answer is it depends, but more likely than not, you are going to have a case. And the first thing I always think of, Joel, when you think of school buses is when that school bus is stopping or slowing down, either letting children get on or get off the bus. Yeah, and we're in the state of Georgia, and in the state of Georgia, there is a specific statute that covers the duty of uh, other drivers when they're approaching a school bus, and that means either approaching, approaching the school bus from behind or approaching the school bus from the oncoming direction of traffic. And that statute is OCGA 40-6-163. And essentially that tells us what the duties of those drivers are, as well as the criminal penalties that can be assigned to the driver um, if they violate that statute. But I think most people in any area of the country are familiar with school buses. When they stop, they have the red stop sign that comes out on the side and usually other flashing lights on the bus as well. Well, if you're following behind that school bus, if you're approaching that school bus from the opposite direction, um, you have to stop yeah. when you see it. Right. You need to give sufficient clearance of that school bus so that the children can get on or off the bus as they need to. Yeah, all, when in doubt, always stop. You know, I, I can see the argument where it might come or become confusing to drivers. Say you're on a four lane road with a concrete median divider and a school bus is stopping on the other side. And I know the laws changed a little bit. And yeah, and that's we, actually, that's an exception to the rule, right? So right. there's a, a divider and it's illegal to walk across that divider to get to the other side of the road, then if you're on the other side of the divider from the school bus, you can keep going. Right. Now that may be different in other states, Correct. but at least that's in the state of Georgia. And that's actually in that 46, 163 statute, that exception. That's right. And if there's not a divider and say it's a two lane road or whatever, you need to stop, right? And if you're in doubt, slow down and stop. I mean, slow down at a minimum, stop definitely. And of course, if there's cars right behind, you don't want to slam on the brakes or anything like that. But as soon as you see the bus slowing down and the lights flashing, and that arm coming out, just stop, right? Because yeah. if you don't and you go through and you hit someone, you are absolutely going to be responsible. Yeah. Not only terrible criminal penalties, which there should be, but also civilly responsible. You're probably going to be hearing from some lawyers like us that deal with personal injury claims because if a child is hurt when you violate that particular law and you don't stop, not only are you subject to the criminal penalties, but a lawsuit can be brought against you uh, for the damages that you cause. And if you hit the school bus, there may be property damage involved. Right. If you hit the school bus, there may be a lot of bodily injuries involved, especially if there's kids on the bus. But you know, if you hit a single child um, with a car, there can be some pretty catastrophic damages that occur to that. I, I think just recently, um, down in Henry County, Georgia, there was a little eight-year-old girl that was hit by a car and last I heard she was in critical condition uh, by somebody who violated this law and it's very, very sad um, for her and her family, but that family is likely going to have a, a viable claim against the person that hit her if that person, if it turns out they really didn't stop those, those lights. Um, but that brings up another interesting point, and I want to approach this from Georgia law, um, and that's when a minor child is hurt, that's usually what it's going to be when it's mm -hmm. a school bus incident, yep. who can even bring that claim? Yeah, it's typically the parents, right? So the parents bring the claim on behalf of the minor, um, and it's the minor's claim. Now in Georgia, if you're under 18, the parents are always going to be responsible for paying the medical bills and things like that. So when you bring a claim on behalf of a minor, you know, say there's, there's hospital bills, surgery bills, things like that. Those are technically the parent's claim, but the pain and suffering and the intangible damages are gonna be the minor's claim. Yep. So the parent brings that claim 
on behalf of the minor and if there's any settlements or you know judgments or anything like that depending on the amount and how much the child's going to get you're talking about getting conservators set up getting structured settlements or annuities set up for the minor uh, which is where you put all the money in a basically an annuity or structured settlement to be paid out once they turn 18 or when they turn 21 25 however you want to set it up but to answer your original question it's typically the parents yeah and it's just the way that at least in the state of georgia that the law tries to protect that money mm -hmm. for the minor and i know that most parents would would keep that and preserve it for their kids anyway but there's a lot who wouldn't and so the law sets up these safeguards to protect that money for the child when they turn 18. and there can also be some situations where you know let, let's say the minor is 17 when they get hurt and then they turn 18 a week later, but they continue to get medical treatment after they turn 18. Well, the medical bills that are incurred by the child or by the parents when the, the kid is a minor um, will be still be the parent's claim, but once the child turns 18 um, or the age of majority, then that claim becomes the now adult's claim. Right, when you bring up a good point about, you know, the courts typically want to protect the children um, when it comes to cases getting resolved or injury cases uh, getting resolved. So it's not only just what they do with the money, um, courts have to approve settlements for minors, right? So the parties can agree on something, then they can take it to the court. In Georgia, if it's in litigation, the court that you're in, whether it's state court, superior court, whatever it might be, that judge can approve the settlement, but you still have to take it to the judge and say, Judge, we have come to an agreement with this minor's case. Here are the facts. Will you approve this settlement? If the judge doesn't like it, or if the judge thinks they're trying to do it, you know, for whatever reason, uh, they can deny the settlement. You have to go to trial and things like that. Now, if you're not in litigation, then you'd have to go through the probate court to get uh, minor approval of any settlement. So yeah. there's that extra layer of protection. Yeah, and, and so all of that can get kind of complicated. Um, especially when, you know, if you're a parent and you're, you're grieving the loss of a child or you're trying to, to make sure your child's getting the care that they need to get better after something tragic like this. So it's usually always best to reach out to a lawyer that's familiar with that system and, and how to pursue those claims, how to structure the money or do an annuity and get court approval when necessary and all of those type things. Um, but other than that, it's, you know, if you can show that the person who hit your child um, violated the law, they didn't stop for the school bus, um, and then you can show that that violation of the law caused your child injuries, um, and then you can prove what those damages are, which would be medical bills and pain and suffering, um, maybe some other collateral things as well, um, then yes, you would have a claim. Um, but they're very similar to you know other car wreck cases and and what you have to prove but when the school buses are involved there is that extra layer of uh, protection that the law gives the, the children um, and the school bus driver when they're getting on and off the bus under that statute 40-6-163 um, so that can make your case even stronger if you can prove that that law was violated so. absolutely you got anything else on that? No, I think we you know, covered a lot of it. I guess one sort of interesting difference that you get with school bus cases and some other cases too is that a lot of times, especially in Georgia, there's cameras on the school bus and yeah. cameras when the stop sign comes up. So sending open records requests to the county where the school bus is to get all that evidence would be extremely important as well. Yeah. So. And I almost forgot about that. For buses that don't have cameras, the school bus driver under that same statute we've been talking about is actually required to report a vehicle description, license plate, if they mm -hmm. have it, anything and everything they can find out about the car that does not stop, right. they have to report that within 15 days. So just because there's not a camera on the school bus doesn't mean that you're not getting reported if you violate that law. So um, it, it's really common sense, you know, just to protect children, um, which we should always be mindful of doing. It's to protect the school bus driver, um, and so when you're driving in the mornings, when you're driving in the afternoons, just be mindful and look out for those school buses and, and use extra caution and make sure you give a safe stopping distance, um, whether you're behind the school bus or coming towards it, um, to keep our children safe. Yeah, absolutely. Err on the side of caution when in doubt. That's so. right. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we hope this video has been helpful to you. If so, give us a thumbs up. Uh, hit that subscribe button. Otherwise, we will see you next week for another video in our series of Do I Have a Case?